Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Vespers this evening. This is a, a beautiful night to be gathered uh, in the chapel for worship, and we're grateful for the concert choir and Dr. Samuel Barbara uh, for bringing their wonderful gifts to us this evening, the gift of music, and uh, for the, the opportunity to gather and to worship. We're going to be doing a couple things tonight. One is we're going to be talking about the word blessed. And so at some point, I'm going to ask you to take out your uh, telephones and do, uh, send, if you're a Twitter person, do hashtag blessed, and you understand that when I get into it. So at this point, it won't make a lot of sense to you. Um, the other thing we're going to be doing is celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And I know for some of you, you come from traditions where you can't do that all the time. And so what we're going to do is invite you to come forward uh, to take uh, the bread and the cup and if you're on this side, you'll come forward and you'll go to the left. You'll take the bread first, then you'll take the cup. Uh, there is a garbage can on both sides where you can just drop it off. So if you're over here, you'll go this way. Uh, if this is not something you can do, all you do is just stand up and let people go past you. So you go through the center aisle to come forward. You return by the side aisle. It's real simple. So just allow it to just kind of to move smoothly. Friends, it is great to have you here for worship this evening. And uh, as we begin... Uh, Sarah is going to lead us in the call to worship and the opening prayer. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us worship God. Please bow your head in the prayer. Holiness, word, power, you reveal yourself as one God in three persons, a mighty cre creative life-generating dancer who invites your creation to join you. Catch us up in your love and lead us into your world to call others to follow you with the singing and rejoicing.
Please be seated. Creation displays the glory of God, but our sin keeps us from rejoicing in the love God reveals. Yet Christ Jesus, the Son, carried our sins to the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into us so that we can praise God, our Maker, Savior, and life-giving lover. Let us confess our sins that we may receive such grace. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Presence, life, fire. God, who is three in one, we confess that we have turned away from you. We gaze upon ourselves as if we are worthy of worship. We take your creation into our hands, not to love, but to use and then to discard. We go to the people of the land, not to serve, but to press them into our service. We do not deserve that you would even notice us, but we pray for mercy because you are merciful. Flame of love, purify us from sin. Eternal now, lead us to your truth. Risen one, baptize us into union with you. Transform us into faithful disciples who worship you alone. God, who is Trinity. Amen. The Holy One of Israel, the Redeemer of all the world, and the Holy Spirit, who comes as the breath of new life, forgets the sins of all who repent. I declare to you, therefore, that you are forgiven in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. Amen. Friends, as we uh, gather and we worship, we've heard the words of confession and have joined together in the gift of forgiveness. And so now I'd like to invite you to share God's peace with one another. And so I'm going to say, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And your response is, and also with you. Okay? So may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Take a moment and greet one another with the words of peace. Please listen to the prayer for illumination. Singing into our ears, O Spirit, the holy word of life, tell us who we are and to whom we belong so that we may live with gratitude for all that you have done. Amen. The scripture reading, Matthew 5, 1 through 12. The Beatitudes, when he saw the crowd, he went up the mountain. After he sat down with his disciples came with, to him. Then he began to teach them by saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will be inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil things about you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, because your reward is heaven, great in heaven, for they persecuted the prophets before you in the same way.
Thanks so much, choir. What an awesome, awesome song that uh, is a great place to begin. So let me pray. All creatures, great and small, praise to you, O oh God. Lord, we hear, but we don't hear the message you send to us. So this night, may our minds, our ears, our hearts be opened up to hear that which you want us to hear. We ask this in your Son's name. Amen. Roberta was an amazing lady. Roberta is someone I met 35 years ago. Roberta was about this tall. Roberta always had a smile on her face. Roberta always greeted you with a pleasant, I'm blessed. Roberta just knew how to make it work. She knew how to run her life. She had five children. She had a wonderful husband. She was just this beautiful lady. Roberta was the cook in the church that I served when I was fresh out of seminary. She made incredible food. She never once, probably in her entire life, looked at a recipe. Did any of you know someone like that that can just make it work? My grandma was like that. She could make the best cookies. When she passed away, guess what we didn't have? The recipe. So everyone has tried their best to make those wonderful sugar cookies that she made with no success at all. Roberta was like that. But Roberta always, always, whenever you would meet her, she would say, when I would say, how are you doing, Roberta? Didn't matter whether it was raining outside, which in Florida it hardly ever did. She would always say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And so I want you to do me a favor. So this would be a little interactive. Can you say that with me? First thing I want you to do is just say, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Okay? Now I want you to say it with some feeling. I'm blessed. Say it like that. I'm blessed. Now I want to ask you a question, and you don't have to answer this question. Why? Why are you blessed? What about you makes you feel like you're blessed? Roberta knew. She knew that something about her life had been blessed by God. But why are you blessed? Have you ever written a, 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 a text or, or maybe a tweet or something like that where it says you're blessed? Blessed to do something? Have you ever done that? Blessed to go to Niagara Falls? Blessed to sing in the choir tonight? Blessed to eat a good meal in the tub? Blessed to have a car to drive? Have you ever done that? Maybe you've never written it out, but you maybe have thought it. Well, we have a problem. I think we have a problem because here's the definition of what the word blessed means. And this is maybe going to shock you. If you were an immigrant, or if you were learning English for the first time, here's what the word blessed means. The word blessed means having a sacred nature connected to God. Having a sacred nature connected to God. I think we have a conflict. The conflict is the sacredness of that, the sacred nature connected with God, that biblical understanding of what the word blessed is, is different from what the world thinks the word blessed means. Would you maybe agree with me? It's possible. So I want to share a little bit with you. If you have everything you need and you say you're blessed, what are you talking about? Again, interactive. If you have everything you need as a college student and you're blessed, what do you need right now? Sleep? More time, more money, less loans, all those things. So if you have those things and you have everything you need, you're blessed. In society, we think about stuff and money and having as much of it as we can. That's one way we say we're blessed. Another one, blessed with a beautiful, intelligent mind. Is that any of you? Blessed with a beautiful, intelligent mind. Smartest guy in the room syndrome. Do you ever know anyone like that? Always can tell you the answer to every question? You're blessed if you have that. I met a lady today at, uh, at dinner. No, it was at lunch today. I went to the football banquet, and one of the guys introduced me to his grandma. 
And he said, my grandma has this ability to quote back any scripture in the whole Bible. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you. I couldn't do that in a million years. But she can. That's a gift. And it certainly is biblical. She's blessed with that. How about blessed with athletic gifts or an incredible voice or the ability to play an instrument or the ability to remember things? You're blessed. In the social world, the social media world, saying that you're blessed can be a way of boasting while trying to sound humble. Does that make sense? Some of you are smiling. You know what I'm talking about. Don't you, Patty? <laughs> Not to call you out. <laughs> Goes kind of like this. New job. Hashtag blessed. Opportunity to go to Vegas and gamble. Hashtag blessed. How many of you do Twitter? How many, any of you do hashtags? Okay. I have no clue what a hashtag does. My simplest version of what a hashtag tag does is tells everyone in the world if they want, they can look at what I just wrote. Does that make sense? Okay. It makes no sense to me. I don't know why you'd want to know that. But some of you have used hashtags for things. So if you have your phone, what I want you to do is pull it out. And if you do Twitter, I want you to send a tweet out. And uh, I want you to say, hashtag, I'm blessed. That's all you got to write. Hashtag, I'm blessed. See if anyone will do it. Johnny's pulling his phone out. I, I just became friends with John. So we'll see if this is real, John. <laughs> so hashtag, I'm blessed. Wonderful family. Hashtag, blessed. Or trip to the Bahamas. Hashtag blessed. Going to visit a friend. Hashtag blessed. If we're putting all those things out there and we're saying hashtag blessed, in what way, in what world does that fit with the biblical understanding of sacred in nature, blessed by God? You see the conflict going on here? Okay. So the world says one thing, but we've kind of pushed away what perhaps the scriptures say to us. In the, New York, in the New York Times, which is something I enjoy reading every once in a while, I came across an article called Blessed Becomes a Popular Hashtag. Now, wanting to know what that was about, I began to read, and I found this story by Jessica Bennett, uh, who was talking about ways that God has touched her social network. Ways that God has touched her social network. Let me share some of them with you. It's kind of fun. Uh, she says, God, which she refers to as a she or a he, God helped a friend get accepted into graduate school. She was blessed to be there. God, again, she or he, made it possible for a yoga instructor's Caribbean spa retreat. Blessed to be teaching in paradise, she wrote. God, again, he or she, helped a new mom outfit her infant in a tiner, tiny designer frock. Does anyone know what that is? What's a tiny designer frock? What is a frock? Someone help me here. I might want to go out and get one. What's a frock? Okay, what's a frock? Anyone want? Look, somebody look this up. You've got phones. I need to know what is a frock? A shawl? No, it's not a shawl. Now we've got a debate going. What is a frock? When, when someone finds that, I want you to just kind of yell it out. A dress. It's kind of a dress, according to Carissa. So when you go out and get your new frock, hashtag blessed. Do it. How about this one? Um, God, again, he or she, graced a colleague with at least 57 Facebook wall postings about her birthday. So blessed for all the love, she wrote to approximately 900 of her closest friends. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Makes sense. Here's the point. There's nothing quite like invoking holiness as a way to brag about your life. It's amazing, but we try to do it all the time. Calling something blessed has become the go-to term for those who want to boast about something. 
some accomplishment, pretending to be humble, uh, using uh, sacredness as a way to get around it. Of course, blessed has long been used in religious settings. As Christians, we use the term, of course, we pray to God that God will bless us with God's presence. We pray that God will guide our minds so that we can do well on exams. We pray to God that God will be with us when we travel somewhere. We pray to God before we eat meals. We pray to God before we gather to worship. We're trying to bring the sacredness together within the church setting. One translation of the New Testament, the East, uh, English Standard Version, has 112 references to the word blessed or blessing or bless, none of which is a blessing that's connected to a material thing. Yet we connect it to material things all the time. I'm blessed because I've got a new car. And I just got one for the first time in 13 years. I feel blessed. No, I don't. I'm fortunate to be able to do that. I love being able to drive a new car without feeling like I might break down as I drive from here to Newcastle. But I'm not blessed because of that. Although I hope that God will bless me as I drive it. When I was in New York, one of the first things that happened to me in this small little town where I lived, this guy came in on a big Harley. Run, run! And I can hear him coming. And this is a small town, so now I've got this big Harley, and this guy walks in, and he is all ready to go. And he says, would you do me a favor? I went to the Catholic church to see the priest to get him to bless my bike, but he wasn't there, and they sent me to you. And I thought to myself, well, I don't really know how to bless a bike, but let's give it a go. And so we went out, and we talked for a while, and then we prayed for his blessings as he was traveling across the country on this big bike. Blessings. So where do we look to? Where do we, how do we get an understanding like Roberta of what it means to be able to say, I'm blessed? The scripture for tonight, the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, provides for us a list of ways to understand how God is involved in this blessing thing. Now I'm going to read for you not the same scripture that we read, but I, I want to play with this a little bit. I'm going to read from the message. So verse 3, you might remember. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and God's rule. Hashtag God rules. You're blessed when you feel lo you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then you can embrace by, be embraced by the one most dear to you. Hashtag need a hug. You're blessed when, you, when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment that you find yourself proud owners of everything that can't be bought. Hashtag blessed to be me. You're blessed when you care, at the moment of being careful, C-A-R-E-F-U-L-L, -L, you find yourself cared for. Hashtag cared for by God. Verse 8, if you were able to follow along, it would say, you're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right, and then you can see God in the outside world. Hashtag blessed heart and mind. So you can have a lot of fun with this. These words from Matthew 5 lay it out for us, how to think about being blessed. But you know what? It's not about us being blessed. It actually is this blessed thing is really about God and not about us. God's greatest blessing to us rests in God himself. And when we have that, then we are truly, truly hashtag blessed. So friends, hashtag amen. I invite you to sing with me. Y'all will stand.
Friends, we have an invitation to come to this table to receive the gifts of God's love through the bread and the cup. We come as God's children to this place where all are invited. We come to this place to experience the visible signs of the Lord's presence. The table does not include, include discrimination. All who believe and trust in God through Jesus Christ are invited to come for this meal. This is the Lord's table for you, the people of God. Let us pray. We are grateful, Lord, that we can come and take part in this sacrament, not because we feel like we have to. We come because you have invited us to come. We want to receive this meal, this communion, this gift of the Eucharist, because it is a time for us to come to your table and to say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for creation. Thank you for the ways that you provide. Thank you for meeting us where we are, in the midst of the turmoil of life, as we move through seasons of loss of family members and friends. For meeting us right where we are as we deal with relationships that are difficult or filled with great amounts of joy. We are grateful, Lord, for your patience with us for the covenants that you have made, for, the giving, for giving us the guiding words of the Old and the New Testament. Lord, we are grateful that on this night we come and we break this bread and receive this cup through your Son. Lord, how can we thank you for all of these things? One way is by receiving your body and blood with gratitude, so, Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit to be present here with us and for us all to know and believe in Christ's presence here. May we, as your grateful people, truly understand this meal as a way for us to be nourished, united, and reminded of our rule in the world as members of the body of Christ. As we participate in this meal this night, Lord, we say thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. On the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And he took the bread and blessed it, and then he broke it and he said, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat of this bread. And in the same way, our Lord took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat of this bread or you drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. And you are invited to come to this table. Again, we're going to make our way down the center aisle and receive the bread and the cup and then make our ways to the outside aisles and back into our pews. And uh, if you're not taking tonight, just kind of move out of the way and let someone scooch right by you. So I'd like to invite the servers to come forward. One other thing to tell you is that we have two types of bread. We have gluten-free bread on the glass plate. So G and G, that's a good way to remember it.
I invite you to pray with me. Together. In, according, in accord with God's command that we hold dominion over creation, let us pray for the church, the world, and all for whom we are called to be stewards, saying, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for our world, which you made and renewed in the power of Jesus' resurrection. Make us wise and careful of your gifts as we live on and on earth. God of all goodness, hear our prayer. We pray that the love which passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us all into your unending life. God of all goodness, hear our prayers. For the leaders of the church, for the Protestants, Roman Catholics, and the Orthodox, for Sunday school children and youth, for the elderly whose wise counsel is sorely needed in all ages, and for all ecumenical endeavors that seek to bring us closer to each other and to you, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. For earth and all creatures and plants, for healthy water and air and soil, for policies and laws that regard our home and God's universe as a precious gift, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. Please stand and let us sing together. <clears throat> Friends, go out into the world celebrating the blessings that God provides for us. Know that you have been blessed, but the blessings are God's blessings upon us. The blessings of wonderful music, the blessings of worship, the blessings of friends, the blessings of opportunities to study and to grow, to academically get stronger in your fields. Know that the Lord is present for you in your journeys. The Lord will meet you where you are. Be that on the mountaintop or when you find yourself in the pit of the grave and you feel like everything is against you. So go forth knowing that the Lord is there to bless you. May the Lord bless you forever and ever. Amen.